Chapter 5, Temperance. Back in the office. I should have had two more semesters to finish my M-level in interplanetary archaeology, but my specialty was in Senecan studies. I see. And now with recent developments regarding your psi, your studies are likely halted for the time being. Do you already have a B-level degree? Technically, I don't have a specific degree yet. Degrees are only awarded once you leave the education system. I had just started the next level, so the expectation was that I would aim for the next higher degree level as well. If I had left instead of continuing, I would have been given a Class 2 B level degree. Of course. That makes sense. You also mentioned you were a prime tier student. I was, though I... Never quite got my exam results for the next level, so I don't know for sure if I made prime tier for the next level. What exactly does prime tier mean? Kinesi has no such equivalent. Prime tier means I scored in the top 10% of the class. This group of students receives a small expansion to the nano system that increases their neural processing and memory abilities. The system is quite rigorous, so the expansions help us keep up. We also have classes with live instructors. Lower tiers rely on limited AI instruction. I see. I had heard that New Albion was cutthroat for those who don't live up to high standards. I can see that it wasn't an exaggeration. It wasn't, unfortunately. It must be difficult to thrive under such a system. It does foster a lot of competition, that's for sure. Our system is, of course, quite different. And the requirements for joining a research team are often specific to the needs of the team and division an individual would like to join. We have had people from NISA join our field teams before, but each team covers a broad range of study. Archaeology is one of them. And with a host of interesting Senecan sites in the ways, we have no shortage of work. We rarely deal with people from the larger domes, as I'm sure you can imagine. It's a little difficult to grasp where your experience and skills fall. I do understand the complexities of my situation. Most likely, it would be more beneficial if you joined the Nisian Research Institute first. Do you know how long it will take your residency application to go through the system? It could be a few months. Apparently, they're experiencing delays. And I agree, that makes the most sense if I intend to live here. I think Quill just wanted to put us in touch because he was aware I was interested in the Trinari structure after reading about it. Well, I admit it's useful to learn there's another structure on Dion, and we'll be trying to get our hands on any publications about it, so I appreciate getting to talk to you, if only for that. It can take a long time for those sorts of things to reach our ears out here. So you aren't thinking of continuing your education. It's difficult to be certain what my education options will look like going forward. With my current status, at odds with some of the Triad's Esper regulations. I grimaced, hating how much that made me sound like a criminal. David let out a quiet chuckle. <laughs> That's a common theme among Niso's residents. I can see how it might complicate returning to a university there, but sometimes experience is as valid as a degree. Even so, your education already appears to be quite comprehensive. Earlier you said something about studying the Melanoi script. Yes, as well as the Hadosho plaque and the writings on the Lena artifact. Even I'm only partially familiar with the Lena artifact. I doubt your qualifications will be much of a problem. It's just that without your residency finalized, I can't give you any specifics when it comes to working with our teams. As you're aware, citizens of the Triad are not permitted out here. We try to avoid exceptions. But I doubt there will be an issue with becoming a resident and citizen of Nisa. We have a team staying in the city to help with a recent discovery there. I'll put you in touch with the team lead. And I hope Quill will find you a contact within the NRI as well. It would be amazing to touch base with your team here. And Quill has had me in contact with someone at the NRI as well. Perfect. I appreciate your taking the time to talk with me today, David. Not at all. We have a special relationship with Nisa and its citizens, and Quill is an old friend. I'm always glad to be of service. Thank you again. 
Of course. We'll talk soon, Morgan. And the call ended just like that. I let out a shaky breath and bit my lip to hold back the little squeak of mixed emotions. Anticipation, excitement were at the forefront, though. This was the second of two exciting calls I'd had today. Earlier, I had spoken with a Senecan research group here at the NRI as well. They were quite small, but working on some exciting discoveries, including a small shattered tablet that appeared to have symbols from both a Senecan script and a Rayan on it. I didn't specialize in deciphering languages, but you couldn't get far in the study of Senecan culture without learning at least some of their scripts. Regardless, the thought of potentially joining that group, even as an intern or something for a while, was incredible. I'd had no idea a discovery like that had even been made recently. Hey, Vale. That sounds like it went pretty well. I almost jumped to the ceiling at that unexpected voice. They let out a soft chuckle, leaning on a nearby desk as they grinned at me. <laughs> and you'd become so good at sensing others within your sphere, too. I was distracted this time, thank you very much. I've also become more adept at blocking everything out, so I'm not bombarded by everything within my sphere. And I think it went well, yes. He was hesitant to make any promises with my resident status still being processed. Apparently, as a new Albion citizen, I'd be trespassing if I stepped into the ways. And we can't have you unlawfully trespassing out there. So it seems. But he didn't seem to think anything else would be a holdup? Getting into one of their teams doesn't sound much different from getting into a team researching on Dion. It's a small field, so you're always trying to push your way in somehow. I'm so glad for you, Morgan. My hands toyed with a stylus on the desktop as a slight smile came to my face. Quill really came through for me on this one. He... always comes through somehow. He's a good guy. And I told you that you lucked out when you met him that night. Uh-huh. I thought you said it wasn't luck. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. That was just an expression. I'm almost certain you deliberately landed yourself in a place where he'd find you. I just don't believe in coincidences that convenient. It does seem too good to be true that I happened to meet Quill, of all people. But I'm not sure I buy that I somehow tapped into my unconscious inner precog and sought a future that favored me in all possible ways. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I see you, Vale, being like... You subconsciously looked into your future and was like, this is this is the safest one for me. I'm going there. Hmm. Not sure why that's harder to believe than the world's biggest coincidence. Maybe because the thought of having that precise control of my psi, especially unconscious, is a little frightening? I understand very well how terrifying it can be when you first awaken and start learning all the things you can do. Especially when confronted with the idea of what you might do unintentionally. But denying that possibility is dangerous. You'd be surprised at how much just being aware there's a process for these things hinders your ability to do it. When you learn that process, it stops you from doing things accidentally, and can even make it difficult to do intentionally. Knowledge is a form of control. The problem is that I've gone over it a hundred times trying to dissect every second of that moment. I can't say for sure what happened, but I'm certain I didn't see some sort of crystal clear future of a peaceful life in Nisa. All I recall was a strange sensation of there being a road ahead of me, and maybe that someone was there? But it's a jumble. I was terrified and in a lot of pain. Even if it was something precognitive, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to say for sure what happened. It's still what makes the most sense to me personally. I believe there had to be a reason you found and caged this specific location within your sphere. I would fail on this one. It's like, you believe what you want to do, Morgan, but my headcanon is this. On a surface level, it might have been sensing someone that would bring safety. On a deeper or more subconscious level, it could have been something more. Safety is a heavier term than you think. If I looked ahead and picked a convenient future path for myself, that means forcing Quill onto a path I wanted. That seems like such a burden, being able to do that. You're overthinking it, Morgan. Which, to be fair, is a bad habit of yours. 
Tell me what choice we make that doesn't affect the future of everyone in our immediate circle. We always imagine our choices existing on an isolated island we call our life, but our lives aren't isolated islands. Everything is interconnected. You just don't think of your choices directing the futures of others like that, even though it happens all the time. The only difference with Thea Kinetics is that you have a lot more information about what choices you should make to get an outcome that you want. It's not as dramatic as what you're making it out to be. We don't have some godlike ability to alter time. Besides, Quill isn't complaining. Who's going to complain when some beautiful woman drops into their life? I wouldn't. Quill's not. Locke needs to find a hot ass burn in an alley somewhere. He hasn't dated anyone for over two years. <laughs> Rest in peace, Locke. Vale, please. We're at work. I'm certain Locke wouldn't want you broadcasting his relationship status. Look, in a lot of ways, you still think like a non-esper. You see Sai as this frightening power that can affect things in ways that are unnatural. But Sai is a natural part of everything, too. Being able to use it is no different from anything else. Just take it from me. Don't think about what could have been anymore. Think about what is. And embrace it. I'll do my best. Good girl. A door slammed elsewhere in the building, and heavy footsteps sounded in a nearby hallway, causing us both to pause and look that direction. There were more footsteps, another door slammed, then low voices. One voice raised, shouting something mostly unintelligible. Then there was more quiet speaking before both sets of footsteps retreated. And silence again. I guess things are still heated if people are slamming out of the committee hall in frustration. Sounds like it. If I was having a pretty good morning, it sounded like Quill and the rest of the committee members definitely were not. When are they having the actual vote? I imagine it'll be after lunch. They're still in debates now, and I guess we just learned how that's going. Quill made it sound like most people are siding with him and Locke just a few days ago. I wonder what's getting so heated. The people siding with Vic are very passionate. Also, I don't know if you've ever argued with Quill or Locke, but it is annoying as hell. And don't claim that bantery nonsense you and Quill do is arguing. You're more like a married couple. Having an actual debate with him is infuriating. See, even Vale knows what's up, girl, with you guys. We are not like a married couple. Okay, true. You're like an old married couple. Morgan, you tease him about his snoring. That is the most married couple thing you can do. Okay, but I have a very specific reason for doing that. Like... Sleeping with him, I assume? That was once! Not like that! It involved being unconscious next to each other, to use his words. Stop assuming things! I hope you realize most of the staff here thinks you two are dating, and that's why he hired you. <laughs> Damn, okay. Is nepotism rampant here? It's not uncommon. I mean, it's a small town. Besides, no one's complaining. More like they just saw what his desk was like before you got here, and they think only a significant other would have the patience to deal with that. I... really want to make a comment about that. But considering I do live with him, it's an understandable assumption. Though I guess people have never heard of flatmates. Sure. The two of you are just... flatmates. That sleep together. And they were flatmates. Literally. Slept. Anyway. I guess I can imagine how an actual argument with him goes. He just sits there staring at you. And just when you think he's fallen asleep with his eyes open, he drops something that decimates your argument. In one fell swoop. Locke, on the other hand, was in law school. He's never practiced law because of what happened with his health, but debating with him is even worse. And the thing is, in a lot of places, people in charge are lawyers and policy experts. But it's not like that here. Most are just normal people like Quill. Someone like Locke is an exception rather than the rule. So it's no wonder the debates are sometimes emotional. 
Sounds like they all may need a break to cool down for a while. Oh no, they don't tend to call recesses. They just stay in that room arguing until they're all too tired to do anything else. Well, that sounds... horrifying. Don't worry. Eventually, all the assistants get together and storm the room so we can drag them out and make them go home. Wow. I can't wait to see that in action. Now that we have a queen in our ranks, it might be much easier than in the past. I guess we'll have to see about that. I stretched again, checking a small clock on the desk. With all the committee members shut away in their conference room, there wasn't much to do. That's why I'd been able to make a couple of calls that Quill set up for me. But now that those were done... Are you doing anything for lunch today? I have something to take care of for Locke, unfortunately. So I'll have to take a rain check if you were going to invite me out. I was thinking of stopping at this cafe Quill introduced me to. It has a nice outdoor seating area, perfect for enjoying the fresh air. No fresh air for me today, unfortunately. At least not at lunch. That's okay. Do you want me to bring you back anything? A coffee? I will. A little while later, I found myself having lunch alone for the first time in a while. Since the solace, really. I'd become so used to always having someone else near, it felt strange to be out by myself, even though I used to do it often in New Albion. But now that I was away from work, it was nice. There had been people gathered and protesting when I left the building. They hadn't been there when we arrived in the morning, but the media leak wasn't without consequences. I'd had to leave from the back of the building just to avoid them. No one was being angry or violent, but it was stressful to walk past a crowd of people yelling at you. And my last experience with a large crowd hadn't been amazing, if you know what I mean. At any rate, I was certain the mild stress I'd felt was nothing compared to Quill's current stress level. It would be nice if he'd let me help cook or something. Or offer a massage or something? Oh, yeah, you just wanna just casually massage Quill, eh girl? Flatmates. <laughs> Wait... Would a massage even be helpful for Quill? Helpful? I don't know, but enjoyable? Probably? Especially depending on where the massage is? <clears throat> Weren't all his muscles metallic glass fibers? Could you even increase circulation in metallic glass fibers? Zizelton. Also sometimes spelled Zizeltan. This is a metallic glass made of zinc, silicon, and titanium that is used for many advanced cybernetic prosthetics. It is also used as one of the base materials for neo-human skeletal and muscular structures as well as many of their organs. This alloy is lightweight and has both high tensile strength and resilience, making it an excellent choice for a variety of uses in multiple fields. And I think um, Vaughn's um, limbs are made from that material as well. I knew little about neo-human biology beyond that they did have a circulatory system of bio-organic compounds. Then again, they must have pressure, pain, and pleasure receptors, so maybe it would still feel nice even if it didn't relax anything or increase circulation. I'd have to ask. Either way, he deserved a respite after this. He was working so hard to protect Nisa and do what was best for everyone. Though I shouldn't assume Vic Sager and everyone that agreed with him didn't want the same in their own way. But for now, they had to get through the referendum vote. And there wasn't much I could do to help with that. I had a lot to think about after my call with David, too. What if I did join the Research Institute here? What if I actually could go out to the Waste? If I obtained citizenship here, should I renounce my new Albion citizenship? It felt weird to even think about, but cutting ties would probably be for the best. Cutting ties and... staying here becoming a part of this place. At this point, it had already become the natural thing to do, which meant the outcome of this referendum was of significance to my future as well. I spent a little less than an hour at the cafe, ruminating on everything over lunch. As I was getting ready to head back to the office, I ordered coffee for Vale and, with a slight smile on my face, ordered one for Quill as well. Hopefully he'd enjoy having it after a long, annoying debate. And as a last minute thing, I ordered a tea for Locke. I wasn't sure what he liked, but I remembered he had tea when he came to Quill's place. I'd feel bad if I left him out. Good on you, girl. Feeling refreshed and wondering if the votes were finished, I started back. Maybe the protesters would be gone too. That thought buoyed my mood and lightened my step considerably. 
I was more than halfway back to the office when it happened. Whoa. It started with a curious shiver that ran from the top of my head down to my toes like an electric current. I stopped in place, every hair on my arm standing on end. My heart was suddenly racing. Something felt off. Something was wrong. What in the world? Though I rubbed my free hand over my arm to smooth away the goosebumps, I couldn't shake the strange feeling. This is... a sigh response. Every nerve in my body was tingling. It didn't feel like a threat, but something was going on. Okay, I'm like, are you in danger? I shifted closer to the building next to me. A quick glance around revealed what could be the source of the feeling. There were a few people gathered near the end of the block at an alley entrance. The only thing I saw out of the ordinary. They were peering at uh, inside at something on the ground there. It could be innocuous. There were a hundred reasons people would be looking at something in an alley. Did somebody else teleport here? I don't know why, but I was dead certain that was what had caused the odd feeling crawling up and down my spine. It wasn't that same sense of imminent danger I was familiar with from the day I escaped being chased, but it wasn't exactly a warm and inviting feeling either. I wasn't sure how to interpret it. Should I see what was going on? Or maybe just slip past? This is weird. This... This has a lot of the same feelings as, like, the introduction to the common route, where it's like, check out the fountain, don't check out the fountain, you know? I'm like, I just got, like, that same vibe all over again. Okay, we're both flexible and cautious, so I can't, I can't base my decision off of that. Okay, whatever it is, isn't immediately dangerous. It's not warm and fuzzy, but it's not dangerous. So let's go check it out. In the end, I wasn't sensing danger. For all I knew, it was an injured animal or something. I steeled myself and kept walking toward the group, slowing when I was maybe five meters or so away. One of the two people standing at the alley entrance met my eyes as I approached. I gave them a slight smile. Hi there. Is everything okay? Whoa, hello. Who are you? You have a great look. I don't know. Seems like someone found a guy collapsed here. Looks like he needs medical attention. We can't get him to wake up. We think he's human, so I'm not sure where we take him. I don't know of any clinics nearby that do humans. Human? Maybe I could help them. There was always Ripley's clinic. It wasn't that far away from where we were. I moved between the two people, leaning into the alley, and froze on the spot at the spill of white and red hair on the alley floor get out of town. Rory? <laughs> oh my god! It really was like the fountain. I'm so glad I investigated. Rory, how did you get here? <laughs> Sweet baby! Uh, okay. Also, I am really sus now, because I'm like, why do you have a sprite, huh? Random person staring into an alley? What what part do you play in anything? Hmm? I'm suspicious of you. Whoa, hello, also new person. You know him? The person crouching next to him, tried, trying to rouse him, glanced up at me with surprise. I thrust the box of drinks I'd been carrying at one of the people near the alley entrance as I stepped past them and knelt next to Rory. Sort of. Not really. It's a long story. Rory let out a soft groan, but didn't fully wake as I said his name again. Reaching to him cautiously, I brushed the grimy hair away from his gaunt face. Last time I'd seen him, the hair had been solid white, but that had receded a little. He was still pale and dirty, but I didn't see any injuries on him. How in the world did he get here? It was strange to imagine that he'd followed me, but how else did he get here? And if he did, why had no one else found me yet? If you know him... I really don't. We've met once. I'm aware he's an esper. It's possible he has psi fatigue. He needs to see a doctor. 
I don't know a single doctor here that can treat an Esper. Maybe over in the Comos district. There is one in this area. Not sure how happy she'll be with me for dumping another stray Esper in her lap, though. There is not much choice. Where is it? It's not far, but I don't drive, so I can't... My partner and I can get him there if you tell us where it is. Eretz. He gave an apologe apologetic smile to the one I'd handed the drinks to. Sorry, Neil. I know, I know. Duty calls. I'm on the intake committee, so I deal with this stuff sometimes. I can handle it. Ah, that makes more sense. Rave is an acquaintance. He nodded back to the alley entrance, then sighed when he realized the other person that had been there was gone. He said he had somewhere to be. Just left. Figures. Anyway, he's the one that called me over. We were on a date. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt your date. Ha. Huh. Get in line if you want to give an apology. Not your fault, anyway. Without you, we'd still be wondering what to do with him. If anything, we should be thanking you. He shot me a grin as I stood to get out of Eretz's way so he could slide his arms under Rory and lift him. Happens all the time, anyway. This guy can't tell anyone no. There was a gentle sort of affection in, in his voice as Neil motioned me out of the alley and handed my box of drinks back to me. Eretz effortlessly carried Rory's limp form out into the sun. In the meantime, I pulled out the HCD quill had given me so I could bring up Ripley's clinic location on the map feature. I showed Neil where it was, about three and a half kilometers from where we were. I wish we could give you a ride over since you know him, but we'll barely be able to fit him in the back of my car by himself. Ah, uh, I have to get back to work anyway. My boss should be getting out of a meeting soon, and I need to be back by then. I work at the Central Committee building. They didn't need to know that, but it would hopefully help explain why I couldn't afford to just wander off and help them. Oh, and my name's Morgan Leone. Sorry I didn't introduce myself yet. I'm Neil. And Eretz has a friend on the committee, so I guess I know what meeting you're referring to today. Yeah. Why don't you give me your contact details? We'll let you know when he's been dropped off. That sounds great. Thank you so much. I glanced at Eretz, who was struggling to get Rory into Neil's very compact vehicle. What usually happens with people like him when they arrive here anyway? Depends. If he needs it, he'll go to a hospital. And if not, probably to Genoa. It's a shelter for newcomers. Kind of weird to find someone in the middle of the city like this when they haven't already gone through there, if I'm being honest. I'm surprised you aren't aware of it, too. Didn't you go through there when you arrived? That's also a long story. I'm also an Esper who kind of ended up in the middle of the city without going through there. Yeah, I can understand that look he was giving me. I'm sorry, I said it was a long story. I guess it's not that hard to get past the border gates if you're an Esper. I've heard about it happening before. Or just desperate. Or both. You said his name is Rory. Well, that's the name he told me, anyway. The only other thing I know about him is that he might be a Rook. If he has Psy Fatigue, Ripley should be able to help. She treated me when I arrived, too. He's in, Neil. Then we'll be in touch, Morgan. Thanks for your help. We're lucky you happen to be passing by. Guess it really is a small city. Yeah. Lucky. I was starting to come around to Vale's there are no coincidences philosophy. The two of us joined Eretz near Neil's car. I peered in at Rory. He was still unconscious, curled up on the too small back seat. Thank you both so much. Just doing my job. Sort of. Look, there's one more thing before you go. I don't know what this man has been through, but whatever it was, I can be certain it was a lot. Tell Ripley she might want to just check his system for, I don't know, substances or whatever. I don't want to assume anything, but to be safe. 
I'll be sure to tell her. And I'll give you a call to update you later. Thanks. Neil and Eretz hopped into his vehicle and were pulling away from the curb a few seconds later. I watched them until they disappeared around the corner and the few other onlookers had dispersed. Not even calling the safety department for this. Things here really did work differently. Though they did say the force was small, so maybe they were just used to doing things this way. My HCD chimed, startling me out of my thoughts. Quill, of course. I answered, awkwardly holding the device to my ear as I started back the way I'd been going before. I'd never get used to taking calls this way. Are you on your way back? Caught Bale a minute ago. They said you went for lunch. I'm on the way, yes. Are the votes finished? There was a long pause. They are, yes. What's wrong? I thought I'd been keeping my tone neutral, but I guess I wasn't as good at hiding how I felt as I assumed. Or Quell was much better at detecting it than I realized. It's... not wrong, exactly. Something is bothering you. What happened? We'll talk when I get back, okay? I'm not that far away. I should be there in a few minutes. Sure. I'll... see you in a few minutes, then. We hung up, and I hurried to make it back to the office as quick as possible. I hadn't meant to worry anyone. Especially not Quill. When I arrived, there were still a few people loitering in the front, so I skirted them and went in through the back again. Quill was waiting for me, right inside, leaning against the desk with his arms crossed over his chest. The moment he saw me, he left that spot, but I sidestepped him and continued to my work area so I could set the box of drinks down. Quill followed, a dark look on his face. Did the vote not go well? The vote was as expected. The referendum didn't pass, but you... Good grief. Let this man worry about his girl for a second, Vic. Get out of here. Quill, can I have a word? The look on his face was not encouraging when we were interrupted. And for a moment, I thought he would say no, even if the person behind him was Vic Sager. Quill gave me another long look, but I just shook my head, motioning him away. With an irritated sigh, he left me and started towards Sager. Oh, fine, but let's keep it brief. We've all had a long day. Yes, it has been quite a morning for everyone. Sager gave me a brief nod, dark eyes lingering a touch too long on my face before he turned away. <sighs> he and Quill moved to the opposite side of the office, speaking quietly. I watched them for a moment. Both were standing close with guarded posture. Neither one looked happy. Despite what Quill said, I had a feeling they'd be a while. I paused as I unpacked the drinks, thinking back to what had happened earlier. Rory. I couldn't believe he ended up here. Not just here in Nisa, but somewhere near where I was living and working. What did it mean? I'm so glad I saved him again in the uh, common route. Good grief. I wanted... I wanted to talk to Quill. To Vale. To anyone. I ran a hand down my face, letting out a long, slow breath. It's going to be okay. Isn't it? For the time being, I pushed it from my mind. I folded the carrying carton for the drinks and set it aside, making a mental note to take it out before I left. Pulling out my HCD, I opened the message center so I could at least send Vale a message that their coffee was here. Now tell me what happened. I let out a yelp at the unexpected voice, whirling around when I realized Quill was right behind me. Ugh, I really need to calm down. Sorry, I didn't hear you there. I looked over his shoulder, but Sager was nowhere in sight. That hadn't taken as long as I expected. Quill was staring at me pretty hard as he moved to my side. I told him we'd keep it brief. Nothing he has to say now is going to change anything. Ah, he didn't look happy. No one enjoys losing, even if it's inevitable. I hope he's not planning to do anything to you, Morgan, to use his blackmail on Quill. That would be real crappy of him. Hmm. So what happened out there that has you this much on edge? I let out a shaky breath, chastising myself again for yelping like that. Instead of answering, I reached for Quill's coffee, holding it out to him with a faint smile. I got this for you. Morgan... It's going to get cold. 
With a soft sigh, he set his hand over mine, forcing me to lower the cup to the desktop. Thank you. But please tell me what's wrong. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Quill's like, I just, she's upset. Let me fix it. Just stop everybody. Stop the world for five seconds. This time, the sheer annoyance on Quill's face at having been interrupted almost made me laugh. Locke, however, hesitated a few steps away when he caught sight of it. Or I can come back? It's fine. You can come over. I'll let you have him in a minute. He's very popular today for some reason. I'm popular every day, thank you. You really aren't, Quill. Honestly, yeah. I do not think I'd call you popular. Everyone likes you, but kind of from a distance. True, true. He's quite unapproachable at times. It's true. You have to know the right moment to... For God's sake, Morgan! Will you just tell me what happened out there and stop trying to avoid the subject? Out... where? Did something happen? Is everything okay? She says nothing happened, but she sounded upset when we spoke. I don't think I sounded all that upset. Did I? You were definitely upset. You are upset. And jumpy. Stop denying it and tell me what happened. As Locke joined us, I handed him his tea and tried to figure out how to explain what occurred. So, I was on my way back from lunch when I had a weird feeling. I know that sounds silly, but I think it was a sigh response of some kind. I was trying to work out what was going on when I noticed this small group of people gathered near an alley up ahead of me. They were looking at something on the alley floor and... You avoided them, right? Right? You did not go and check out what the suspicious people in the alley were doing. Right, Morgan? Right? <laughs> I knew he was going to come out with the second right. Uh... Look, they weren't suspicious. So no, I didn't avoid them. I thought they might need help. Ugh. You have literally survived a kidnapping Morgan. You, more than anyone, should know better than to approach anyone even near an alley. First, I would argue that might not have been a kidnapping, per se. More of an attempted... Arrest? Of an unregistered esper? Oh man, I wish- uh, Caleb would wish to be here in this moment right now to like record her and be like, could you say that again? I did not kidnap you? Cause sheesh, she like never admitted it in any other route. Yes, yes. You resisted arrest by the esper police. We're all aware of your dramatic criminal history. That is not the point here. And second, if you'll recall, I met you in an alley. You were barely- no. Stop. Morgan, that's not the point. You don't approach weird people in alleys. I thought this was a safe city. It is. Then why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling. <laughs> Holy crap, Locke! That was the loudest slurp of tea ever! <laughs> That was so good! It's like, ah, oh, the tea is piping hot today! <laughs> so good. Locke slurped his tea loudly as he watched us. Quill responded by glaring at him, which did nothing but make Locke grin over the rim of his cup. Look, it doesn't matter. I checked out the people in the alley. Yell at me later if you want to, because that isn't the point. The point is... Whatever feeling I was having wasn't danger. That's a sensation I know very well. So I stopped to see what was happening. And there was a person unconscious on the ground. Don't look at me like that! They didn't do anything to him. He was just collapsed there. Also, he was an esper. That I... kind of know. Sort of. What? Ah! Uh I met him a day before the, you know, attempted arrest slash kidnapping, and then again the day after that. It's complicated. 
I don't know how or why he's here. The last time I saw him was a new Albion. Did this man follow you here? I'm not sure how he could have. I mean, if he followed me, surely Endgame would have been able to as well, and they're not lurking in alleys or grabbing me off the street or anything. Well, this works out. I was going to find you and tell you about the same guy, I think. How the hell are you involved in this? I'm not exactly. It's just that I have a friend on the intake committee. You must have met a man named Eretz Morgan? Yes! He and his partner took Rory to Ripley's clinic. So why did this Eretz call you? Is that... his normal protocol? No, it's not that. I guess Morgan told them she was an Esper and that she was working here, so he thought I might know her. That makes sense. Well, Rory came to at Ripley's, but not long enough to give them any useful information. My gut tells me that he's not dangerous. Why would we assume he's dangerous? No reason. Oops. Morgan... Look, he's definitely not in the same situation he was in when I last saw him. Rory isn't even my big concern here. I just... What if he did follow me? I just don't want to drag anyone here into my mess. And I feel like I'm... I don't care about whatever mess is following you around. Half the population has some kind of mess to clean up when they got here. I just don't want anyone to find you until you're settled in with ties they can't break. Right. But if Rory did follow me, then others could find me too. And if they found me, they'd find Nisa. Hey. To my surprise, he reached and tipped my chin up to look at him. <laughs> Locke's like, I'm just over here drinking my tea, not noticing the domesticness happening here. Just, that's all I'm doing. I'm not kidding. Don't worry about your mess. No one here is worried about that. I'll try. To be honest, there's something else I have to tell you about this, Quill. The actual reason Eretz decided to tell me about it personally. Because, yeah, it's not his normal process. I guess I should let Morgan hear it, too. You mean there's more? Unfortunately, yes. Locke leaned in closer with a quick glance around the room as if checking if anyone was nearby or listening. He has traces of Aronsol in his system, Quill. Ripley notice it right away. First scan. I shot Quill a look. Aronsol? What was that? I feel like I've read that before in one of the glossaries or something. Oh, hell. He swept a hand across his forehead, then dragged a hand through his hair, letting out a frustrated groan. Let's not talk about this here. Agreed. My place? Give me an hour and I'll be there. Alright, we'll see you then. With the sudden tension and an odd, apparently, secret meeting, I had to wonder, what in the world was going on?